wave times I know. I do have an audience. <laughs> Should I turn the light off, the other light? Or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you think that's, is that too dark? Are we good? Is it too dark? I think it might. Well, yeah. Well, that oh, looks if really you focus good. it, it'll be clear up. Like tap it. Do what you think. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. If you want, I can just cut off all of that part later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Ruth Willis, and in my class with the University of the Cumberlands, I did my research on PBIS, Positive Behavior Intervention System. This is my action research. So our introduction is, or my introduction is, 70% of our students do not read on grade level. How do we motivate and challenge the students to read? PBIS has been implemented, implemented in classrooms for many years. PBIS helps motivate, encourage, and challenge students to strive to do better, not only academically, but socially as well. This study will explore research that identifies the uses and contributions of PBIS, how to motivate our students. In my review of literature, I looked at the intention of this research is to determine the benefits and contributions of positive behavior intervention systems in high school grades. This research will identify what positive reinforcements are, how to implement them, and what the benefits and contributions are of using these. Um, two articles in particular um, I looked at by Kendra Sherry, extrinsic, extrinsic Motivation refers to our tendency to perform activities for known external rewards. Extrinsic motivation refers to behavior that is driven by external rewards such as money, fame, grades, and praise. This type of motivation arises from outside the individual. So the purpose of this research for the students it is, uh, for them, they, they need to be able to take ownership um, of their learning. Number two, they need to track their data, self-assess, indicate personal and academic goals. Um, they must have a growth mindset, and they must learn to self-advocate. Um, information for us as the adults, PBIS has been piloted in three intervention classrooms within our school. As uh, PLC, we share the common goal to encourage our students to be more positively engaged in reading in hopes to assist in comprehension, vocabulary and definitions, and rate, which are words per minute. This re uh, my research questions are two. Um, will the use of positive behavior intervention systems motivate students to desire to read more efficiently? And will the use of positive behavior intervention systems motivate students to work harder to reach their reading benchmark through improving reading comprehension, vocabulary definitions, and rate, which is words per minute? Um, my, some of the data sources and collection and procedures. To determine the effects of a, a PBIS, positive behavior intervention system, the class grades were recorded before, during, and at the end of the study. Test scores of each participant were recorded before and at the end of the study. Comprehension, vocabulary, and rate levels were recorded before and at the end of the study. No names were used in the presentation of this data. And then data from the research will be compared and findings will be determined from all the sources. Data sources. Three sets of data were used. Class grades, test scores, behavior, and attendance. Averages were calculated using the class grades and test scores of participants. Behavior and attendance was informally monitored, checking for any possible correlation between those. Data sources again. Um, the process will go as follow. 
as follows. We implement the PBIS by introducing the strategy and rewards. Teachers and students will track points um, used in PBIS via a weekly point sheet. Analyze the students' uh, uh, results and display the data to um, determine if the strategy had an impact on student comprehension, vocabulary definitions, rate, um, the reading grade level, behavior and attendance. And we would compare these results with other classroom teachers. Analyze and display these results and then determine the patterns from data collection methods. Um, our PBIS rewards looks something like this or looked uh, something like this. 21st Century Literacy Rewards Programs. Um, when the students earn tickets, or they would earn tickets for drawing monthly, excuse me, they would earn tickets for drawing, uh, for drawings monthly and semester and be rewards at the end. Um, if the students received or got an 82, a 100, they got a small piece of candy. If they got two combos, this is all, this all goes with our Reading Plus program um, that we are using throughout the year. So if they earn two combos, they got a large piece of candy. If they leveled up during that week, at the end of the week, they got a drink, which was either Kool-Aid or water. Um, they received a bag of chips and a small piece of candy. If they leveled up throughout the entire month at all, every two months they get a large reward. Uh, possibly movie, popcorn drinks, a spa day, sports day, time with their favorite teacher or an administrator. Um, we will have uh, uh, drawing for prizes, or we had drawing for prizes, and also a pizza party. We would invite the kettle corn people and the Kona Ice people as well. At the semester's end, we'd have a drawing for possibly a Chromebook. Um, we also have drawings for gift cards, possibly Canes, Gigi's, Walmart, Dollar Store, Kettle Corn, Kona Ice, Barnes & Noble, etc. We also have t-shirts that we will give to the students. At the year's end, we may take a field trip, possibly to an amusement park, college ball games, meet UK uh, basketball players, or other com uh, connections that we have in the community. Exiting the program is, is our final um, uh, reward, and um, that is when they meet, grade, uh, meet benchmark on grade level. So the data collection of the student's achievement. The, the first test, the first assessment that we had was their screening test. And the periods, uh, these are broken down into periods one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and into five levels within those uh, categories. So each, cat, or each class, um, some were at a preschool level. Some were two to nine years below grade level. Some were only um, one to one and a half grade levels below. And then if they meet benchmark, of course, they would move out of the program. So in this first class, um, or first period, you would see that 21% of the students were at preschool level. 57% were two to nine years below level. 32% one to one and a half years below grade level and none were on benchmark yet. Period two, you will see none of those um, met the preschool level. There were 77% of the students in that particular class at two to nine years below grade level. 23% were at one to one and a half years below, and again, no one at benchmark. Third period, no preschool levels. 62% of uh, the students were at two to nine years below. 38% one to one and a half years below, no one on benchmark. Period four, pre, no, no one at preschool level. 71% at two to nine years below grade level. 29% one to one and a half uh, years below, no one on benchmark. The next period, 10% were at preschool level, 90% uh, were two to nine years below, and no one at this point was in these two categories. Now. Um, this went on for about two and a half months, and then we gave the second insight test screaming, screening, which was our midterm test. All right. So on this test, we saw some differences in our uh, percentages. This preschool level group went down to from 21% to 14%. This went up to 44%. 
which there were significant gains, 14% in the one and uh, a half years below grade level, and we had 28% of that class meet benchmark. So they will be moved out of the program. Um, period two, nobody in the preschool level, 16% at two to nine years below, which again, significant gains. 56% were at one and a half uh, uh, years below, which again, significant gains. 28% met benchmark in this class. Period three, no one in the preschool level. 7% in two to, years, two to nine years below uh, grade level. Again, significant gains. 43% at one, in, one to one and a half years below grade level. Again, significant gains. 50% of these students met benchmark. Uh, in fourth period, no one uh, was in the preschool level. 10% two to nine years below. Again, significant gains and movement in these categories. So the more they move up, the better their scores are and the better their chances are of moving out of the, the intervention program. 30% at one, and one, one to one and a half years uh, below grade level, significant gains, 60% met benchmark. Period five, preschool level, no one in there. 60% were two to nine years below grade level, great gains there. 10% one to one and a half years below and we have 30% met benchmark. Again, all because I believe uh, in my research that we motivated these students uh, positively through their behavior and, and with uh, extrinsic motivation. Okay? So to answer the research questions, will the use of positive behavior intervention systems motivate students to desire to read more efficiently? Um, absolutely. Based on the results from the action research, I could determine that students were 50 to 85% more successful when the PBIS was implemented. Comparing the assessments where the PBIS was not implemented, implemented, students scored lower on their assessment. Will the use of positive behavior intervention systems motivate students to work harder to reach their reading benchmark through improving reading comprehension, vocabulary definitions, and rates and words per minute? Overall, the students were motivated to not only work towards their potential, but attend class regularly when PBI stra PBIS strategies were implemented in their intervention uh, system. The, the variety of motivational tools helped also guide where students, uh, or where further action can take place from this action research. So our follow-up actions uh, continue. Actions that researchers will take uh, will include Present, uh, present findings to the PCL group, PLC group. Present findings to administration and faculty. Continue to use the PBIS in all literacy intervention classes. Hopefully even uh, uh, further out uh, into other classes. Finally, uh, find additional ways to use PBIS to have a continued sustainable positive impact on student learning. In my conclusion, I enjoyed conducting this research. Our PLC has struggled to find our niche this uh, year. This research has forced us to communicate through the struggles to model success for our students. Not only did the data show great improvement in scores, it showed how encouraging our students were to each other as well. I too benefited from the use of the PBIS motivational tools. Students challenged each other to push themselves to strive to do more. The motivation paid off academic, academically and with higher attendance and less behavior issues. We are expanding the use of PBIS throughout our school. I do believe this motivational tool will, will improve, uh, will promote higher academics, lower absences, and lower negative behavior incidents if implemented with great fidelity. I look forward to this expansion. And here are the references. And the end of the references. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this.